Let's work through an extended tree example using a problem from homework one, the hailstone sequence. Before we build a hailstone tree, let's recall what the hailstone sequence even is. We pick a positive integer n as the start of the sequence. If n is even, divide it by two. If n is odd, multiply it by three and add one. We continue this process until n is one and we've developed one of the hailstone sequences, the one that starts at n. Sometimes these get quite long. Five goes to 16, goes to eight, goes to four, goes to two, goes to one, and then it's done. First, let's write a recursive implementation. Hailstone is a function that prints out the hailstone sequence starting with n and then returns the length. If it's the case that n is 1, then we return a length of 1. Otherwise, if n is even, we print the rest of the hailstone sequence, starting at n divided by 2. This function call returns the length of the rest of the sequence, so the length of the whole sequence looks like this. If n is not even and it's not 1, then it should be odd. So we print out the rest of the hailstone sequence, which starts with 3n plus 1. That gives us the length of the rest, so the length of the whole thing is one more than that, and we return that length. The hailstone sequence, starting at 5, is 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, and its length is 6. If I want to store that length for perhaps a longer sequence, then it will just print out the sequence, and length will be bound to the length of this sequence, which has eight elements. A hailstone tree is a tree that holds all of the hailstone sequences up to a particular length. The tree that holds all sequences of length one is just a leaf with a one in it. There is a hailstone sequence two one, there's a four two one, an eight four two one, sixteen eight four two one, thirty two sixteen blah blah blah. Sixty four goes to thirty two, one twenty eight goes to sixty four, goes to thirty two, sixteen eight, four two one it is a length eight hailstone sequence. So if I built a hailstone tree for sequences of length eight, this would be included as one path through the tree. Now there's another way to reach sixteen, which is to start from five, triple it, and add one. And in order to reach five, we could have started from twenty which halves to 10, which halves to five, triple and add one to get 16, eight, four, two, one. So another path through the hailstone tree of sequences of length eight has 20 as a leaf. In fact, there are two more sequences of length eight. I could have started at three to reach 10, or I could have started at 21 to reach 64. This is the whole hailstone tree for sequences of length eight and its leaves are all the possible values of n that start such a sequence. So we're gonna define the function hailstone tree, which returns a tree represented using the tree class, which contains all of these label values. So return a tree in which the paths from the leaves to the root are all possible hailstone sequences of length k ending in n. All of that should have sounded reasonable except for this ending in n part. Isn't it the case that all hailstone sequences end in one? That's true, all complete hailstone sequences end in one. But if we define this function where we can end in any particular value n, then I can make a recursive statement. The hailstone tree of everything ending in eight includes the hailstone tree of everything ending in 16. So that's where we'll use the n is to say I want a partial tree that doesn't go all the way to the root of the whole thing, but instead just builds one of the branches. Let's get to it. The most important feature of the hailstone tree is that sometimes a tree has two branches and sometimes it has only one. Let's define the condition under which there are two branches. First, some helper functions. How do I figure out if n is odd? I just return n percent two equals one. That is, the remainder of dividing by two is one. How do I know if n is an integer? I just make sure that rounding to the nearest integer doesn't change the value of n. And now I can define when it's the case that there is a 
second branch to a hailstone tree. There's a second branch whenever the label of that branch is an odd number that I could triple and add one. When can I triple and add one for a value n? It has to be the case that this hailstone sequence is not over, so n is greater than one. It must be the case that n is odd, and it must be the case that n is an integer. Now let's define hailstone tree. For paths of length k, ending at the value n, which by default is 1. If k equals 1, then we're just going to return a leaf. Otherwise, we need to construct the branches. The two possible ways of reaching n are from above, 2 times n, or from below. So if I triple n and add 1, inverting that requires me to subtract 1 and divide by 3. The branches will always include the case where I call hailstone tree on k minus 1 and this value up, which is double n. But it might be the case that there's a second branch. If it's possible to triple and add 1 to this value down, then we'll do it. Branches dot append a second branch, which involves a recursive call to hailstone tree that's still one shorter, but now has down as its root label, which I'll round to the nearest integer. I know it's an integer because I checked right here. So that's just getting rid of the point zero at the end. Finally, we'll re return this tree with n at the label and the branches we've chosen. There might be one or there might be two. So here we go. The hailstone tree of height 1 just has 1, 2 has the sequence 2, 1, 5 has 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. But it should be the case that at length 6, we have two alternatives. We could start at 32 or we could start at 5. Perhaps it's easier if we print it out and see that there are two different branches under the subtree rooted at 16. If we go all, all the way to length 8, we see the four leaves, 128, 21, 20, and 3, which are all hailstone sequences of this length. Now this tree is a compact representation of all the different hailstone sequences of a particular length. But perhaps we want to just list them all out. We could define a function to do that. A function that lists out all paths in a tree. Defining all paths requires tree recursion. If it's the case that t is a leaf, then there's only one path. A path is a list of label values, and there's only one label value, which is t.label. Otherwise, the result may be many paths. So we'll build them up by going branch by branch. Every time we call paths on a branch, we're going to get a list of lists. Each of those lists contains the label values from the root of that branch all the way down to each of the leaves. Since we get a list of lists back and we're going to try to construct one list of lists, we're going to extend the set of results so far. Now these paths aren't quite enough because they don't include t.label. So I need to include t.label on the front of each path for p in the paths of b, where b is a branch. Now, if I look at the hailstone tree of 8, instead of printing the tree, I could ask for the paths in the tree, and I'll get a list of the four different hailstone sequences, here in reverse order, from root to leaf, that have length 8. And if I wanted to look at longer sequences, then I could just go through every p in the paths of a hailstone tree of size 11 and print out that path. So here's one that starts at 24, and here's one that starts at 26.